This is the 13th video talking about the Control 101 MATLAB toolbox. And here we focus on proportional design using frequency response. The community then has agreed on an outline structure for a Control 101 course. And the Control 101 toolbox has been developed to support such a course because these tools enable visualization and also support tedious number crunching requirements so students can focus on core concepts, understanding what is control and what are these techniques. This video focuses on introducing the concept of proportional design using frequency response stroke bow plots. Now a note, CISO tool is excellent for this in general, but is a bit more complicated. So the toolbox apps are deliberately simpler so students can focus on one thing at a time and see the core relevant parameters very clearly. Some technical background then. It's common to use phase margins and crossover frequencies to underpin frequency response design. So you can see the phase margin here in the phase plot of the bow diagram and the gain crossover frequency in the gain plot. And in the red circle, you'll see where the actual numbers are listed. Some typical design requirements then. We need to look at how designs might be systematic in meeting sensible criteria. <clears throat> so one criteria could be a maximum allowable overshoot or damping. And in frequency response, we usually convert this to an equivalent phase margin. We might be interested in the rise time or the bandwidth. And equivalently, in frequency response, we'll use the gain crossover frequency. And similarly, we're interested in offsets to steps or ramps, and this is a low frequency gain criteria. So a simple gain design has only one degree of freedom, so we can only meet a single one of those criteria, and usually phase margin is chosen, which links to damping. Now it's known that a phase margin of about 60 degrees is often a good start point. So designs will often begin from this. It's not always the right answer, but it's, it's usually a good start point. <clears throat> so how would we do this with proportional? Well, the first thing you do is you draw a horizontal line through the phase at minus 120, because that will show you where you can get a phase margin of 60. Then you draw a vertical line up to the gain plot, and you find the corresponding gain of the system. The system here is the blue line. Now, you want that gain to be zero decibels. So in essence, you have to scale here by minus a decibels in order to get zero decibels at the correct frequency. And that's your simple proportional design. Now, impact of delays. It's well known that the real world often differs from the ideal model used in the bow diagrams. And the app includes the option for small measurement or transport delay. So users can see the impact this little uncertainty has on the frequency response, the margins, and the corresponding closed loop behavior. OK, let's do a live illustration then of the app. So here's the app. OK, and you can see at the moment we've got a model of 2 over s plus 1. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a slightly more challenging one because it works better. So we'll choose this one here. And what can you see? At the moment, the phase margin marked with this pink line here is clearly less than what we want. So this green dotted line going across the phase margin plot has come from your target phase margin. So that's your criteria. I can change that. I can aim for 50 degrees. I can aim for 70 degrees. You can change it. So you decide what is your target phase margin. And this green line will move. So you can see, is the pink line big enough or not? Now here, clearly, I need to move my crossover frequency all the way to the left to over here. So I've got to move the gain plot down. So I've got this purple slider to change gain. So let's reduce gain a bit. There we go. And you can see the phase margin will have moved a bit to the left and it's a bit bigger. Let's change gain a bit more. OK, and you'll see gradually as we change the gain, you'll see this pink line is moving to the left. And gradually we're looking for that pink line to intercept with that green line. OK, so we can move this slider and keep going until we're roughly in the right place. Now, this is a, an app to illustrate key steps. It will not allow you to get three decimal places and to be exact. But in this case, we seem to have done a good job. So if you look down here in the left, 
you'll see the phase margin is now 60 tells you the gain crossover frequency and it also tells you the offset if you're interested and you can see the closed loop responses are down here now you can add a delay if you want so let's add a delay with this yellow slider and what impact does a delay have on the behavior so you can see as the delay increases you'll see the closed loop behavior starts to get slightly more oscillatory slightly underdamped and you'll see here the phase margin begins to reduce so in adding this delay I've lost 60 degrees bigger delay and you see the phase margin is now smaller now of course I can try some other systems so for example let's try this system here a third order system um, has the delay a bit smaller and again you can see I can do the same process here you can see the pink line is above the green line so maybe K needs to be a bit bigger so I make K bigger tiny bit bigger again until I've basically got the phase margin that I want and then you can see you've got the plots that you want so hopefully it's fairly clear a number of different systems you can play with and only as many sliders and, and as many choices as you really want to deal with to do this design. So we demonstrated how to run and use the proportional design phase margin app. And this can be deployed during lectures and student private study to help students appreciate and relate their technical and analytical learning to real systems. The manual contains links to some MATLAB source code, and as ever, the manual will open automatically when you open the app. Now, just a reminder, once you're confident in the key steps, users might find that CISO tool is a bit more powerful and versatile in the long term.